Hello, good evening and welcome to Wales where we paint away the stress of everyday life. But I'm not painting today. Actually, I'm waiting for the premiere of the Making Colour Easy video to come up. Um, I hadn't planned on um, being live tonight, which I could have been. I could have been, but you know what life is like, especially in these uncertain times with the old virus that's going around. So um, saying that, I hope everybody is uh, safe and well. And um, I hope the, the lockdown uh, is not being too hard on your mental health. And I think the important thing with mental health is that we have things to do. So as I answer some questions that actually come in, I think this is going to be a, a fun thing to do is um, try and type and ask, answer questions as well. So um, I've got what, over four or five people waiting at the moment. Um, I'm hoping it will go well. Uh, and I thought we'd talk about some sort of a subject. I haven't even decided. I don't even know what I'm going to be doing. But without further ado, let's have a quick introduction. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time, and don't forget to click subscribe. Okay, thank you very much. As I said, um, yeah, I'm just I'm just waiting for this uh, this this premiere to start. We've got eight minutes to go, so um, if you're watching this one, then obviously you're gonna ask ask me questions, and I will review it on the the next one. So, um. My friend Jason Bowen, who's got a, a another YouTube channel, um, Jason Bowen Art. I encourage you to go along and check that out because he does um, Bob Ross, Bill Alexander type of wet on wet technique paintings, and um, he's a brilliant artist in his own right. So please, please pop along, and check him out, give him some support, give him a thumbs up, subscribe to his channel if you can. Um, and he was talking the other week about craft fairs and i watched the video and it me giggle a little bit it really did because it it actually um rung home to me uh that yeah i've done this how many people have actually done craft fairs and i'm i'm wondering what your stories are um were you successful did you sell any paintings um I'm just keeping a timer, a timer on this. I don't want to miss my premiere. <laughs> so I just wanted to know what your experiences were and um, how successful were you. So I started craft fairs back, oh, I don't know. What is it, 2020 now? It must have been about 2006, maybe. Something like that, 2006. So quite a while ago. And... You know, I had I had all the paintings. I went out and I bought all these big storage boxes and, I, and all these paintings. Some that were done on YouTube, some that I'd done separately. And I stacked them all in these. I actually got one of these little trolleys that, you know, you, you pull along and I put three or four boxes on there. And and, and I thought, yeah, I, we, I gotta get, I get some stands. How do I make stands? I've gotta get these to stand up. I had this table full of paintings um and, I, and and they were they were on the floor they were on the top they were propped up by books and other things that i could find um and it was a bit of fun um and i had a little area then where i was just painting away and doing a few techniques and like jason because jason was posh jason was posh he actually was teaching at the time as well so um yeah i wish i was good enough to teach then but i <laughs> i wasn't i was just making a youtube videos um basically uh for um my art group i had an art group in my local church hall and uh, it was quite successful for a while and people would come along every thursday um and they pay a little subscription fee because unfortunately we had to pay for the for the church hall um so it, it covered the costs and i did uh, teas and biscuits and things like that and it was it was quite fun eight minutes is a long time <laughs> i still got five to go i gotta run out of things to talk about <laughs> 
So, yeah, it was really good. And I had the table set up and three or four people. I was teaching them how to paint a tree, in fact. Um, one of my first ever YouTube videos, that was. But this was in the days before YouTube and before Clive 5 Art. And um, one of the, um, the students, if you want to call them students, one of my, my friends, my art friends, come along and um, said, Clive, can you, can you do a, a YouTube video for me um, so I can, I can c continue my, my uh, lessons at home? And somebody else said, oh, that's a good idea. Why don't you, why don't you do that? I went, what's YouTube? I, I don't even know what YouTube is. I, I haven't even got a proper phone. <laughs> what, what are you on about? So one of the lovely young ladies just popped along and um, she said, there you are. Look, this is what you want to do. So I went on, did a bit of research and I thought, oh, this is good. And I started finding a whole new world of learning out there there's people out there that will show you anything you want to know how to fix a washing machine how to do work on the car even how to build a wall in the garden wow this is a fantastic resource i thought so i went home and i did a little bit of research and um beefed up my computer went on joined youtube got my first channel started and um the, the there's I'll, I'll put some videos up there for you to have a look at and um, i was holding to the camera like this um hi my name um i'm, I'm clive and i just wanted to show you how to do a painting and i'm sitting in this rankety old shed with water dripping on my head and acrylic paints um just wouldn't work for me because they were so damp or in the summer they were roasting hot and they were drying as soon as i put the brush on the canvas anyway i i managed to get through the pain of the first couple of videos that i made <laughs> They were like that anyway for two minutes i'm two minutes and counting so um i put the first video out there and it was how to paint a tree which is still on the, the channel actually in the icard and uh, I, I i was i was quite impressed because last when i put it out the, the next time i checked i had a thousand views I went, who's watching that I just thought it was my art group. <laughs> What's going on? Who are these thousand people? <laughs> what, what, what do they find amazing about me after all these fantastic art channels out there? Well, who knows? And it still amazes me to the day. Okay, I've got uh, 60 seconds. Um, so I'm just going to type in very quickly. Um, over there saying hi all I'm you and um, I'm actually making another video <laughs> I can spell it accurately I'm actually oops I don't know I just messed that up sorry sorry I dropped the boo-boo <laughs> So it's not going to be easy, you know. Oh. Anyway, yeah. So I, um, I'm just gonna. I I, I think it's just going to be easier just for me to um, see what's coming in. Alan Tamzad. Hi, Clive. Good to see you. You too, Alan. So I was I making I'm making these videos and and, and all of a sudden um, things just blew up. Took a little while to get up to that like five thousand subscribers. Um, I when I when I had when I first had two thousand subscribers, I was just wow, wow, there are all these people. 
There we go. Well, I'm in the countdown. Oh, I'm just going to put that on. Well, I'm getting deafened you. Maybe I just muted myself talking. Are you, are you and myself talk enough? Anyway, cut a long story short. Um, I then was doing craft fairs and I was trying to advertise my YouTube channel through the, the, the craft fair as well. And um, I think what I'm going to do is just pause this video a second and get back to it because I'm going to answer these questions. So we had some fantastic comments there. Um, I want to thank everybody that contributed to that tonight. And um, Alan did have one uh, question for me, and he asked me if, um, you know, do I select certain colors for the palette? How do I set that out? So I'm going to just cover that one very quickly. So acrylic paint is unlike any other color. Now, acrylic paint will work like a watercolour and it'll also work as in pastel as an oil. But the um, properties of acrylic are very different because they evaporate. Let's be honest. We've all struggled with evaporation of acrylics. They drain so fast. What's the matter with us? Is it me? No, it's the paint or the atmosphere or you know, perhaps you're not using the right palette, maybe. So uh, very quickly, wet palette is recommended. Why? Because simply it's a wet palette. And when the water evaporates from the palette, it evaporates quicker than the water from the paint. So it's got this little evaporation bubble around the paint. So as, as it evaporates, it goes around paint like that keeps it moist that's what you want nice moist paint plus you've got a little bottle you're going to miss the bottle what you've got to do you're going to sneak up to the paint every so often and when it's not looking just go and he goes ah! <laughs> and then it pees itself and it keeps itself moist so <laughs> so watercolor is a paint that you can just add water to. You can mix it on a palette and you can paint it on your paper and you can do that. And day after day, you can come back and when it's completely dry and add water to it and you can carry on. There's not a problem with that. Not a problem with that. Oils is the same. Let's be honest with oils. Oils, um, basically, they, they take so long to dry. They oxidize. Oil take... Oil... Uh, Oil oxidizes rather than evaporates. So oil is a very thick, heavy type of liquid. It takes a long time to, to basically evaporate into the air or oxidize. Um, that's why oil paint can be left on a palette for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And you'll see some of the artist palette, which are very decorative, by the way, because I've, I've seen them on the TV, on uh, Portrait Artists of the Year and everything. They've got this palette. They've got these big piles of paint where well, they've been putting paint on top of paint on top of paint on top of paint and it's in, and over the years it's, it's just built up and it's like little leaning tower of pieces everywhere it's so decorative it's fun <laughs> i just want to go up and go flick them off like a <laughs> so but acrylic evaporates so what i tend to do is once i've decided what i'm going to paint I will use the colors for that painting. And if I want to add more colors, I will add more colors. And I only put out enough paint that I think I'm going to use. And if there's any paint left over, scrape it up. Put it in one of the pill box. The little pill boxes where Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Open them up. The paint in there. Put it on. Just squirt the paint. Come. You mustn't be looking. Okay. And then lock him up. You can put that in a nice cupboard in the drawer, put it in the fridge. Don't tell the wife. It'll really confuse her. <laughs> Ooh, what's this jam? Well, that's really nice jam, love is. That's a cardamom red. Try that on your toast. 
Slime. <laughs> You've been putting paint in the fridge again? No. Bugger. <laughs> So, going back to the craft fairs, um, I think it's important that you remember there's no point painting big canvases. You can see, look, see the minor, too big. See the little board paintings, just right. They'll sell, they'll sell loads of them. Flowers, waterfalls, mountains, to quote Jason Bowen, and they, it does, trust me. Because I painted, I painted them as well. Cats I found sold well. Um, budgies, I sold some budgies, but they weren't cheap. Um, I did sell a sheep once, but that could have been better. <laughs> um, yeah, things like that, but. Oh, 15 by 12, 30 by 40 centimeters. Don't want to go any bigger than that. The, the, that painting there, that one. You just get away with that. Yeah. So, but don't be, a, don't be annoyed if people don't buy your paintings. Because believe it or not, they would rather go to Dunham Mills or the range and buy these wooden lovely wooden frames the most expensive part of the painting of the print print it's not it's not a painting it's a print people so we'd rather go and spend 60 pound on a with a vase and some flowers in it what clive abroad see Good artist he is. I've seen him on YouTube. Brilliant man. Brilliant. He does all his own work and everything. And wow boy. Master artist. Of any chalk, in it. <laughs> but. Do you want to buy my painting? Well, I don't know, but how much is it like? And I can actually do that for you for about £120. £120, is it? Good God, man. I can go to Dunham Mill and buy something better than that for the wife, like? You can, but it's a print. It's not. It's mass-produced. There's... Hundreds of them out there. Well, there might be hundreds of them out there, look. But it's 65 quid, isn't it? And that's a bit much, like, let me tell you. God, man. That's a lot of money, like. And you want me to spend £120 with you? Speechless. It's unique. It's a one-off painting there's not going to be another one even if i paint another one like it it's only going to be another one that's individual because you can never paint two the same nah but 65 quid like yeah and done now minute posh there <laughs> i rest my case so don't be don't be upset if um Nobody buys your paintings or just buy one. And if you're anything like me, I've just spent, I, I just pay, I just charge somebody £35 for a painting. I've been there for four hours, four hours, four hours I've been trying to sell this painting. I sold it for £40. It was £10 for the pitch, £10 for diesel. I bought a, a bacon bap, some chips, a couple of coffees, and then I had a few Welsh cakes. And did I make any profit? Not really. But I had a good day, like, didn't I? <laughs> He's brilliant, man. He's absolutely brilliant. So go out and enjoy yourself. And don't be despondent. Keep painting. And if, if painting is your passion, it doesn't really matter. And 
there's always somebody out there that will buy a painting and it's nothing nicer in the world than seeing or knowing that your painting is going to be hung on someone's wall at Pride of Place. And that's the best thing. And as long as you were happy, it doesn't really matter. And remember what I said. A painting is always the best from the distance. But don't judge your paintings by the distance you see it when you're painting it. Stand back. Two meters. Six foot six. Yeah, six foot six. I had to think about that one. And that's where you'll see it at its best. Because you go into any museum in the world, any art gallery, and you should be standing at least six foot away from the, the paintings. Go a bit closer and see exactly how that artist painted it. And you'll go. Good God. How do they get away with that? Because you see it from six foot away. <laughs> Tip, you know, like from up the valley's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me on this chat. I'll most probably throw a video in next time and we'll have a chat. Anything you want to talk about or you just want to listen to this Welshman waffle away in Wales, then join me. And die over there, the miner, who's down down the pit there, see ya? Feeding his horse. Because he's as blind as a bat down there. And all he can see is the light from his torch. So, it's no star, Ikigid, from me in Wales. In other words, good night everybody. Have fun. Stay safe. Don't let the big bugs bite. That's what my mother used to say. I said, bed bugs? We got bed bugs? You didn't tell me that, ma'am. <laughs> Don't give me any of that cheek. Or see this? You're going to be laughing from the other side of your face. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>